on the dare um we're really really excited about it honestly um we've both done a lot of research and found a whole bunch of new information to share with you so you can register with our bitly uh link which just takes you to a google form and it's there at the bottom there's tons of information about it on the facebook page um, in fact, there's a post that's pinned to the top that'll give you more details about what we're covering and all that fun stuff. So, all right, hosting real estate events. So I want to hear, since I can't see you guys, I want to hear from people who, um, like just by saying I do or Jill does or Karen does, who does events? I've done them. Who's I? Because I can't see you. Mandy. Oh, sorry. Mandy. Okay. I've done events. Katrina. Anybody else? I've planned uh, or been trying to plan an event, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, Linda, we might have to connect since we're basically in the same area. We might have to connect on that. All right, so events. Karen, go ahead. I have not done one recently. Okay, but have you done one in the past at all? Yes. Okay, all right. So events are not just a gathering. It's not a birthday party, of course. This is about helping us grow our business. Um, they leave lasting impressions on attendees. They can be for something as simple as just bringing people together in your community, or it can be a giant event that is a client appreciation event for all of the people that you have had done business with or that you consider to be a part of your sphere of influence. They can also be a way to get warm leads. Um, so... It takes uh, a lot of planning, but there are ways that you can do events at no cost to you, but then there are certain types of events that do end up costing quite a bit of money, especially things like your client appreciation events. Um, you can get sponsors for that, but that's really about you saying thank you to your clients. Um, so why do an event? It's a networking opportunity. If you do things like, and we'll talk about different types of events in, in just a second, but if you do things like a lunch and learn, it's about networking with other real estate agents. Um, you never know when you're gonna need some assistance with something or like for me, I work very rural. So a lot of agents from Cincinnati will call me and say, hey, I don't wanna drive that far. Will you take care of this for me? Um, market exposure by putting information out there, advertising, you're getting your name out there. Um, education and knowledge and sharing information like this event. That's the purpose of this event, education and knowledge and sharing getting lead generation opportunities, building your brand, getting some community engagement. And then the last one, like we just talked about, client appreciation. So the first thing when you're planning an event is to decide what kind of event do you want to do? What is your end goal? Are you wanting to build your database or just get out in the community and get people to know, like, and trust you? We call that the KLT factor. Um, I'm doing quite a few events. So my community is very small. We literally live in a village and there are 1200 people. I don't market my community, but I want to give back to my community because those people know people who live in other places who may want to buy and sell houses. So lately I've been focusing on doing a lot of hyper local events in my community, which also are very affordable. So there's different types of events and the ones that we're going to talk about today are here. There's a community event where your goal is just to start growing that KLT factor. These can, I recommend that these be small so that you can actually connect with the people that show up and you have time to talk to them individually. Uh, maybe host something within your farm and again, keep it hyper local. Um, lunch and learns. These are events that will help you network with other real estate agents. You could of course do a lunch and learn for um, generating leads, but I think that would be a little bit more difficult to take care of. Uh, to knock out all of the details and make it so that you have time to connect with the people as well as share your information. You can keep lunch and learns really simple. You can get a preferred vendor or partner like your lender, your title company, or the attorney that you work with to sponsor the lunch and perhaps even provide the venue. So that can be done for free, pretty much. Same thing with a community event. You can get it to be done for free, get people in the community to sponsor things that you need because that helps them get their business out there as well. Lead gen is one of the more popular reasons for people to host an event. Um, it is an event that's open to the general public for the most part. You could do a lead gen to your farm. Um, and I'm not doing it specifically to my farm. There's one that I'm going to be doing next year with my lender. Um, but I am doing special invitations to non-owner occupied homes in my farm. 
Um, your event can be as big or as small as you want it to. Um, I recommend a little smaller so that you have the opportunity to still build that KLT factor. Client appreciation events. These are the ones that get a little expensive. They are either large events or very intimate events. And we'll talk a little bit more about the differences and how you can um, make it an intimate event versus a large event. Um, you're primarily doing this to thank your clients for their business and their referral business. And then community festivals. This is something new. I see a lot of questions about it on social media. Um, I have not done one, but I did attend a class in uh, Modern Agent Blueprint, and I'm going to try and get that gal to come and do a presentation to us because she was phenomenal, uh, what she does for community festivals. And I don't know about where you guys are, but in Ohio, we have a ton of festivals. Um, and she does it. She gets the attention. She's not that person out there saying, hi, you want a free pen? Hi, do you want a koozie? Hi, do you want to see what homes are available for sale? She's actually making it a fun event to do that KLT factor. So I was really impressed with what she had to say. And we'll talk a little bit about it. So things to consider with your event. Are you gonna need a keynote or a guest speaker or are you going to do it? So if you're gonna do it, make sure you are very knowledgeable on the subject and that you're prepared to answer just about any question that could come up about it. How many people do you expect or desire to have in attendance? Because that's going to play a key factor in your location and your expenses if you're going to offer any sort of food or swag or things like that. So then also, is your venue going to need to be intimate? Is it going to be open? Is it going to be a familiar place or formal? Um, I know there's there's tons of different kind of venues that we have here. There's I use the coffee shop that I go to for cat coffee with cat because it's uh, in an old, <laughs> funny, it's in an old um uh, funeral home, <laughs> but it's set up like a home. So it makes it really cozy and comfortable. So that's an intimate setting. Um, we have a cinema here that you can rent. Um, it's called RJ Cinemas and you can actually rent it. They serve food and drinks. So that would be like an example of an open um, venue or doing something outdoors like a wine tasting where they can go outdoors and mingle. That would be an open venue. Um, and then of course the question is, are you going to serve food and alcohol? Um, most of the places serve food, not all, not, most events serve food, not all events serve alcohol. If you do serve alcohol, my warning to you, um, if you are providing the alcohol, make sure you do it like a two drink uh, minimum or two drink maximum for people, um, because that way you can't, um, you know, if they get drunk, it's not on you. Um, your venue and your caterer, are you going to have it catered? Um, are you going to have the event do it? One of the things I love about my coffee shop venue is I can bring in whatever food I want. So if I want to take responsibility and make everything for a taco bar for a really small event, I can do that. I don't have to get a health permit. I don't have to do anything because it's in their venue. Um, and then sponsors and vendors. So are you going to have uh, sponsors? That's the best way to do an event and keep your costs down. And then vendors, are you going to have people come and like a home warranty company or insurance companies come and set up a table so that your guests can talk to them? And then the last thing, but really it is the second thing, once you pick the type of event that you're going to need. Okay, third thing, once you pick the type of event you're going to do and your keynote and guest speaker is going to be your budget. Any questions so far, Carrie? Has anything popped up yet? Nope, we're good. All right. So planning. So we've talked about some of these already. Speaker, figure out who your keynote speaker is going to be and find out their availability and how much they charge. So I was planning a wine and wealth event. It was basically like an estate planning event. And I wanted to talk to people about that that had equity in their home, like a significant amount of equity in their home so that they could turn around and basically get a no documentation loan and invest in some rental properties, be it short term, long term, whatever. The speaker that I wanted to have is a very dynamic and energized speaker. And when I called him to talk to him about it, he's $5,000. So, okay, dang, not having him come. Um, so that's why it's really important to, to find out who your speaker is before you uh, publicize your event and before you, you put your budget together because you need to know how much it's going to cost to get that person there. Um, your venue, decide where you're going to have it. Um, I've had it at um, reservable areas in a restaurant space that are open in a bar space. Um, I've had them outdoors. I've had them at the coffee shop. So it really depends on what, how many people you're going to have and what your intention is um, with the event. 
So once you have your speaker figured out, once you have your venue figured out, and you know what dates everybody has available, then you're going to pick the date for your event. So make sure to check and see what else is going on in your area as well, even for something as simple as an open house, which is an event, believe it or not. Um, I made the mistake of having an open house in a town that one of the ways to get there required you to drive past two major festivals and traffic is horrible. And there were also three other local festivals going on. So needless to say, the traffic to my event um, was nothing because of all the events that were going on. So venue consideration. For a community event, you want it to be centrally located, particularly in the community that you're targeting. So I'm lucky here in my small town, we have a nice park. Um, there's actually a large park and a small park. The large park has a covered picnic area, which is where I'm doing my chili cook-off. And then there's a smaller park has a gazebo, which is where I did the cupcakes in the park, which was my school supply giveaway. Lunch and Learns, your sponsor's office is always a good location, as are private rooms at restaurants. Um, I've done both. Um, the round table conference room at your sponsor's office is always really nice and it keeps it small so that you can connect with everybody. If your event is going to be a lead generating event, your venue depends on how big or how formal you want the event to be. If it's a client appreciation event, again, if you're going to do it for all of your past clients and your SOI, for some people that could get to be quite large. Um, so, but if it's a small intimate event, you can do it at your home, at your office, a restaurant, or some other type of event venue, like a conference room, um, a conference center or something like that. And then of course the community festival would obviously be at that event. So now we're getting into a lot of writing, but those of you that have been to our classes before, um, you know that all of our slides are available immediately following the presentation and then the video is up by Friday. I have two videos to do because I forgot to do the last video on open houses. So I'm um, gonna try and get them both done today and up today or tomorrow. So for community events, these are my favorite because I really like giving back um, and there's no real ul ulterior motives in it. So it's really rewarding. Um, they're also the simple and most affordable events to do. So if you've never done an event or you're nervous about doing an event, I would start with a small community event. Um, marketing yourself is secondary in, in this situation. You're going to have a little table of swag and things to give away. And of course, everybody's going to know you're a real estate agent. And the conversation about, you know, how's the real estate market doing always comes up organically. But your primary focus is to give back and to get the KLT factor started. Um, I use holidays and seasons to decide what kind of events to host in this situation. And I usually have some sort of giveaway to encourage attendance. And the list for community events is endless. I'm working on getting ideas from all sorts of places about event um, ideas. And then I'm going to eventually, within a week or so, put together a list and I'll upload it into the Facebook page. But this is a list of some ideas that I've come up with. Most of them are ideas that I've either come up with or done. Um, so the Chili Cook-Off is my next event. Um, my intent was to have everybody just bring their chili to the park, um, bring the condiments to serve with it, and then I would provide like plates and or bowls. We're actually going to do little Dixie cups for samples. But um, and then I was doing a simple five dollar entry fee, and then five dollars for un or yeah five dollar entry fee, five dollars for unlimited samples, and then all of the money was going to go to the winner. Um, the health department called me. <laughs> Apparently, even if they're making it in their home, I would need a health, uh, a food handler's permit or some sort of event permit. Um, otherwise, in order to avoid that, everything had to be cooked on site. Well, that's not an option. So um, that was only if I charged. So we're not charging for food samples and we're not charging to uh, have the fee to come enter the contest. But I'm doing a $50 prize for the winner. I mean, it's not a lot. But, you know, it still allows me to have that. And I chose chili because it's fall and it's a good time for chili. And in the spring or summer, we're going to do um, a barbecue cook off as well. So um, school supply giveaways is something I've done for several years. You can do it simply as you're collecting everything and then you're going to donate it to another agency. Or like I do, um, I get donations from my preferred vendors, from community members, from local businesses. I go out and I buy the school supplies and I put bags together and then people come to the location. Um, in Washington, we did popsicles in the park. And then, excuse me, here because my uh, cousin makes cupcakes and has a little bakery, we did cupcakes in the park. That was a mistake because the frosting melted. So we learned our lesson. Next year, she'll do cookies. <laughs> um, 
pumpkin painting. You could buy the little pumpkins and paints and have them come to a location and do it. Um, I did a pumpkin carving contest last year where I just drove around and picked the best pumpkins in the neighborhood. You could do Easter coloring or an Easter scavenger hunt. I did both of those last year. Um, movies in the park is always a big one. Um, you could do that for your farm community. That's something we're going to do next year um, for uh, end of the month, June, July, August, and maybe September, depending on weather. Um, you could sponsor an ice skating or roller skating event if there's something that is um, near you. You could do a football in the park where you use the screen and projector to watch the football game. Um, you could even just have like a community football game for that fact, for that matter. Um, you could do just a neighborhood cookout or potluck where everybody brings something. Fourth of July parade or cookout, you could do that in your farm neighborhood. Christmas light decorating competition parade, um, you could do Fourth of July parade cookie decorating. One thing that goes over really well this time of year is like a food drive for the holidays or a coat and pajama drive for the needy. So I did this in Washington. We did a PJ drive and we gave the PJs to uh, one of the adoption agencies in town because so many of those kids come to them with where they have nothing. So um, and if you're going to do it like to give to maybe your local um, child protective services or something like that, make sure you check with them because not all of them take those kinds of donations. So any questions or ideas for community events? Where, um, this is Karen, where do you have them drop off the, like, do you have a table for the pajama collection or the coat collection? I went to my, yeah, I went to my that? vendors. Yeah, I went to my preferred vendors and we had drop off locations throughout town. Um, this was when I lived in Washington, so I was actually in the city. Um, and, or you can have specific days like this year, I'm helping with Operation Christmas Child. I've teamed up with a bridal shop in a local town and we're doing it together. Um, she's having different drop off days for people to bring specific items. And then I'm just going to have people come drop off items um, on a specific day and time at my house because it's a really small community. But if you're in a larger community, you could have it at a specific date and time um, in your particular farm neighborhood or wherever you're wanting to do the event. Just say, I'll be here from, you know, for three to four hours, come drop off your events uh, grab a cookie or give them something to encourage them to come and then maybe even offer a giveaway that if you're going to come and drop off a, a box for Operation Christmas Child, you'll be entered to win, you know, whatever. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All righty. So Lunch and Learns, um, the purpose of this event, again, is to network. They are great for agent attraction if that is a part of your business plan and it's something that your company offers um, as well. Most brokerages do offer some sort of, we'll call it kickback when you bring someone into your brokerage. They are low cost events, as we talked about before. You can get your preferred vendors to host uh, the lunch. Of course, you give them like, you know, five to 15 minutes at the beginning of your event to uh, pitch their business, whether it's your title company, your lender, whatever you choose to use. Um, these are usually about an hour and a half to two hours. The shorter is better. Um, keep your, your presentation short, um, like 30 minutes so that you leave 15 minutes for networking, 15 minutes for networking and questions after. Make lunch something everybody loves. Like if there's a special deli in town or a buffet from a great restaurant, and it doesn't have to be fancy. Something like Chipotle will do. Um, make sure people register, especially if you're going to have food. And if there's a choice of food, make sure they select it. Um, make the topic relevant. Maybe pull the agents in your area and see what they would like to learn more about. And attend at least one lunch and learn from someone else before you do one on your own. It just kind of gives you an idea of how they run their event and what to expect. And then, like I said, make sure you give your sponsor a few minutes at the beginning of your presentation. If you are going to use the, this event as agent attraction, um, be sure to casually incorporate it into your presentation. You don't want to be in their face about it. You want them to know, hey, this is where I work. This is some of the things that we offer or this is a great thing. Unless you're going to do um, like with EXP Realty, we have EXP Explained where we come in and we talk about all of the benefits of the company and working for us. So unless that is the sole purpose of your event, be casual with how you incorporate it. Okay, lead generation. This is probably the biggest reason why people do events. And again, the purpose is to know, like, and trust, but more important, to generate leads. So 
the cost for these can be a bit more and they do require a lot of advanced planning. I would recommend six to eight weeks for an event like this for your advanced planning. And again, you need to focus first on the keynote, then your venue, then again, your uh, date and your budget, and then in your intention for your event and food. So some ideas are home buyer seminars, a first time home buyer seminar, a first time investor seminar, um, estate planning like wills and trusts and transfer on on death deeds. This is where this is what an event that I was going to do when I talked about that um, wine and wealth event where I was going to come in and have people talk to a financial planner about investing some of the equity they have in their home in another uh income property. And then I was also going to have an attorney there to talk about the importance of wills and trusts when you have multiple um, pieces of real estate so that they can avoid inheritance tax probate and things like that. Um, then you could even do, you know, it's so popular right now, the whole STR short term rental investing thing. You could even have someone come in and talk about how to get started in doing that. And you can even break things down into smaller bits. Like I said, first time home buyers, purchasing your second home, any topic that you think it would be relevant to people in your area, you can do. Just make sure that you find a keynote for your event if it's not in your wheelhouse. You don't want to come and be trying to purport yourself as the expert, the real estate expert that's going to help you do all this. Come work with me. And then you aren't knowledgeable enough on the topic to answer their questions. It's always good, again, to have lenders or financial planners, attorneys, accountants, things like that co-host with you, um, at least maybe even having another real estate agent co-host with you so that you can give attention to people and they can give attention to people so that you don't have guests say, oh, it was a great presentation, but nobody came and talked to me. So any questions about lead generation events? Okay. Client appreciation events. These are where they get really expensive. Um, I have done them on a smaller, more intimate scale just to keep costs down. And again, the purpose of this is to solely thank your clients for their business and their referrals. And of course, you want to encourage them to keep giving you referrals. These kind of events need to be top notch over the top. Um, they're generally not cheap, but you can find sponsors. But remember, this is your event and you are thanking your clients. Now, if you have a preferred lender and you want to take a group of the clients that worked with that lender, then you and the lender could co-sponsor the customer appreciate or client appreciation event. Um, these events can be for all of your past clients if you can afford it or just ones from the past year. Or like I said, you could even keep it more intimate if you want to. So for client appreciation, um, in a couple of days, like I said, I'll post a list um, in the files of all kinds of events that you can do. But you could um, do a golf outing where you're going to pay for um, your clients to come in and you're going to do a little, hey, thank you. We appreciate you. You know, here's what we're doing this year. Here's where our business is going. Now go golf and have fun. Um, the problem with doing a golf outing is that you're running around like crazy talking to everybody. Um, you can get a suite at a professional sports game. This is really popular with um, the top producing agents. Uh, you provide food and a couple of drinks for them at the suite. If you don't have a professional sports team, then great seats to a minor league team work just as well. Um, you can make arrangements with the team to have someone come out and take drink orders and um, you know deliver. Everybody gets a small plate of appetizers or finger food. Um, you can do cocktail hour at your favorite bar. Um, I've had a lot of people talk to me saying that just going to a bar and networking has been really successful for them. Not my thing, but if that's your thing, that's a way that you can do it. And and um, I have one lady in um, Philadelphia, actually, and she does a lot of that. Now, she's gorgeous. I think men probably come talk to her because she's gorgeous. But still, she gets leads and clients from it. Um, a wine tasting at a place with live entertainment. So they come in, you socialize with them. They do some wine tasting that you've paid for. And then when you're done, it corresponds with when the live entertainment starts. And then that encourages them to stay at the location which then helps the location as well. Um, if you only have a few, I know we get a lot of newer agents that come into our group. Um, if you only have a few, then host a formal sit down dinner somewhere nice. You could do it at a five star restaurant, um, ask the catering manager for a limited menu. So then your clients can pick from chicken or beef or chicken, beef and fish, whatever you want. Um, or you have them predetermine what they want to eat when they register for your event. I have done a lot of my, I'd say probably 90% of my business is from my SOI. So I know most of my past clients very well. 
And so I've had them come to my home and we have done a, a formal sit down dinner uh, where we've had it catered and we've had like, you know, footmen coming and serving us a dinner, just like it was, you know, back in the Downton Abbey kind of days. Um, you could even kind of spruce that up a little bit, make it fun and say it's formal. I want everybody to dress in their formal wear. The men need to wear a suit or a tux. Make it very elegant if that's if that's your thing. Um and then you can also do like individual events, like you could do smaller ones where you have dinner with a certain group of people at your home, another group of people at a wine tasting. So it's also easier on the pocketbook to do those that way. Um, some less expensive ones that you could do, you could do a group trip to a pumpkin or a Christmas tree farm and plan events with that venue that you can do. Like sometimes they'll have face painting and you can do that for, for the kids. Um, and, you know, other events like they have the where you shoot the pumpkin, you can reserve the whole if you're doing I know we can you can do this at pumpkin farms, So I'm sure you can do it at Christmas farms, but you can reserve the whole place for a couple of hours. So it's just your clients. And again, you could have a food truck come in or have it be catered if you wanted with like a buffet type dinner. Um, a miniature golf outing, kind of same thing where maybe they come after miniature golf and they have pizza and talk with you and keep it really casual. Um, you can do the ice skating roller skating thing again. Um, right now, what seems to be really popular is mini family photo shoots. You could team up with a uh, photographer that you know that and make sure it's not your real estate photographer unless they do portrait work because they're two completely different genres of photography. Um, but hook up with a, uh, whatchamacallit, portrait photographer and you could find a really great venue. It could be that pumpkin farm where maybe they come for your event and they get their picture taken. You would be paying for the photographer who you ask to give you a discount. They give like one or two pictures to the family for free. And then if the family wants more pictures, they can purchase them from the photographer. So that's the motivation for the photographer. And so with Christmas coming up, a lot of people are getting their family photos taken for their Christmas cards. So that's something that you could do for sure. Uh, do a community party and um, have pictures with Santa. Um, have the kids come and talk to Santa. Um, our community already does that. But what I do for Christmas is I do letters from Santa. So I have people sign up and they tell me a couple of things that their kids want for Christmas. And then I send them a letter from Santa and a special little envelope. And it's, it's really kind of cool looking. Um, and then, of course, another thing that's really popular among real estate agents is a pie giveaway for Thanksgiving. Um, it can get expensive. The way that I ended up doing it was my clients from that pre from that year are the ones that got the pies. And I went overboard. A lot of people go and purchase them from Costco because they're like $11.99 or $12.99. But I let them pick out of four different kinds of pies. And I had my cake maker make the pies. And they were like 14-inch pies. And they were delicious. It was a little pricey, but they were delicious. And everybody loved them. So any questions or stories to share about a client appreciation event? Nobody? Okay. Community festivals. Like I said, the way that this lady presented the stuff was just amazing. So they can be fun, but they do cost a little bit. Um, depending upon the event, the table itself can be anywhere from like $30 on up to $100. Um, if you team up with your lender or someone else in your office, you can cut that expense, of course. Um, like I said earlier, I haven't actually done this, but the class that I attended, she made it sound really fun. And it is going in my business plan for next year to do one festival a month. Um, she created a wheel for giveaways. I'm sure you've all seen it um, uh, at, at festivals when you've been there. Um, she makes hers fun. So she you can spin for different kinds of swag. You can spin to enter into the giveaway. She'll have like one giveaway that everybody can enter and then one that's really nice um, that you can only enter if you land on that item when you spin the wheel. Um, she had games like Giant Jenga set up. She had cup flip races and those generate excitement and cheering. So it drew attention to her booth. And I had the idea of doing a cornhole toss to win a prize if you actually make it in the hole, then you get the prize. But what I thought was really cool about her story is that um, she had a Keller Williams booth set up right next to her and literally right next to her. And nobody went to the Keller Williams booth because everybody was having so much fun at hers. So that's probably my biggest takeaway from it was to be loud and colorful and have fun with it. 
Um, again, team up with someone so that you at least have one other person there to make sure that you're talking to people and connecting with people. One thing I wanted to say, if you're teaming up with another agent for any type of event, definitely plan ahead for how you're going to split up the leads. Generally, what I have done is that we have them, you know, we have all of their email addresses from registration. So we put the email addresses into a basket and we just take turn drawing, take turns drawing names. Unless someone specifically comes up to one of us and says, hey, I really like what you had to say. Um, you know, I'd like to work with you. Then obviously you got that lead. But that's a real simple, fair way to divvy out the leads when you're doing um, a presentation or an event with another agent. All right, so let's quickly talk about your budget. One of the things in doing events as a real estate agent is you do not want to show a profit because if you show a profit, you have to claim it on your taxes. So make sure you know your budget. Make sure you're going to have enough money and make sure that you know your budget so that you know what you're going to be asking your vendors for. Um, a lot of times when I ask vendors if they'll help sponsor, they'll say, what do you need? And I'm like, I don't know. What are you willing to give me? And so it's really a good idea to come to them and say, well, I'm using this vendor. My food is going to cost $500. I'd like you to sponsor the food. What they teach you in law school is you can't get what you don't ask for. So just ask for it. If they can't do it, they're going to say, well, I really can't do the 500, but I'll give you 250 for it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I create a spreadsheet in Excel to keep track of my donations and expenses. Because um, like I said, you need that to show a zero uh, profit. One other thing with, um, with events, I can't remember if I put this in one of the slides or not, but make sure you take pictures of your event for tax purposes. Um, save them in like, if I have a directory for events and I save everything in that directory by year, if I do the same event every year. And so you put pictures in there to show that you had sponsorship information out there. It's so like we do a, a Christmas, uh, we participate in two Christmas parades. And so I put my sign on the float. So I take a picture of the float with my sign. Um, we do it up big for Christmas. And so I can write off all of those Christmas lights because I put a sign in my yard that says brought to you by Cat Williams Homes. EXP Realty, and it's advertising. Um, later on, I think in, in November, I think we're going to have my sister, who's a CPA, she's going to come and talk to us specifically about tax write-offs and how to make things work. Um, so just kind of keep those few things in mind with your event. And so here's a simple example of spreadsheet. Uh, this is what I did for my school supply giveaway in Washington. I kept track of who gave me what, where I spent my money, I kept the receipts, I took pictures, bam, done. So it doesn't have to be anything complicated or difficult. Um, and you don't have to be spreadsheet savvy because this is just a simple sum calculation where the balance is, and then I just enter my information. So any questions about budget or anything like that? I have a question. Okay. Um, like, so I've done a couple of different things. I'm in South Carolina. And okay. I've done like a senior expo where it's a thing that they do at the local park and a whole bunch of different vendors come out and I have a realtor table there. I have issues getting people to want to either donate or like want to, you know, give me stuff at wholesale to be able to give out at the event, whether it be like sometimes I do coffee and donuts and stuff mm -hmm. like that but they're almost not willing to give it to me for free or, you know, wholesale because they're like, oh, well, we just want to make the money off of it. Okay. So that's where I get my sponsors to come in. So I'll talk to my lender or my title company or even my inspector, my home cleaner. So on this list, it says Herrera's cleaning services, my house cleaner that I use donated 200 bucks towards school supplies. So mm -hmm. you get them to sponsor um, the food say, okay, I'm getting donuts and coffee, and this is what I expect it to cost. Can you cover that for me? So then it's not coming out of your pocket. And then you have what they get in return is they can either like put out like my home, my house cleaner put out at the event, a list of their services so people could take it. Then you advertise a thank you to your vendors. All of your vendors are on your flyer. Um, so you can show the, when you're advertising it, you can show that the vendor helped you out. So it's free advertising for them. And then at the event, you have a little uh, little thing, a flyer out there that says a special thank you to all of our sponsors. So what they're getting out of it in return is free advertising. 
So in all of basically what you mentioned, I pretty much do. And even the item that I hand out, like it either has, you know, their logo, their branding, their name and everything on it. And they're still not willing to do like to do anything. And if they are, if like, and so I've used, you know, this one coffee company or whatever. So I've paid for it before in the past. Like, I feel like, you know, I advertise for other people, but then again, they don't advertise back for me. Right. Then it's time to find a different vendor. I had that problem with when I moved to Ohio, of course, I had to find all new vendors and I had a lender reach out to me and invited me to lunch. I'm like, okay, great, cool. Yeah, let's talk. And so we talked and I talked about my ideas for events and how I've done these in the past and I've teamed up with lenders. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds great. And then when it came time to me asking her for money, she's like, oh, well, I'll give you $25. Mm -hmm. I'm like, "Uh, no. So now, funny enough, I have a lender from her office that I'm working with on a transaction. He and I have talked. He's shared with me all kinds of stuff that he does. He's like, Kat, I don't care if we haven't worked together before. He goes, I'll help you with whatever you need. So it's just time to start calling around and finding other business partners and preferred vendors to do work. And once they get that relationship going with you, then, you know, they realize that it is a give and take and they are getting something out of it. I've never asked like my donut guy or my coffee guy to donate their stuff for free. I'm lucky. I have my cousin that makes, you know, baking stuff, um, but that's Mm -hmm. not an option for most people. Well, and I like, and I guess I feel bad because I, you know, get my husband to do it. You know, like, you you know, like I had an idea for cake pops or whatever. And I went to someone, you know, local, I asked a couple of people and they're like, you know, four or 500 bucks. And I'm like, good Lord. And I literally bought the machine for $70, bought the the items. Granted, yeah, I stayed up the entire night doing them, but it didn't cost me $500. Exactly. And that's like I said, where you just want to just start, you know, maybe give yourself a little bit more time with your event. And go out and personally like talk to the vendors. Maybe if they're vendors that you do business with, like you go to the same coffee shop every single time, they know you, you bring them a lot of business. So then maybe they'll donate the coffee for free or even, you know, at a discounted rate. I know like with Mm -hmm. my coffee shop, they don't ever, ever do coupons or discounts for anything. But because I host coffee with cat there in my newsletter, I spotlight a business of the quarter. They were my business of the quarter and he did a discount coupon, even though he has never done one in the seven years they've been in business. So it's just about building that relationship. Again, the KLT factor with your vendor. Okay. Okay. So we can come back and talk about that struggle a little bit more when we're done. Cause I struggle, I've struggled with it here with my relocation as well. Okay, so promoting, you've got to promote the snot out of your event. Um, It is everything. It's what gets people there. Um, If you're going to have a theme, pick that out, make it a part of your graphics um, and make it a part of your flyer. Your flyer and your graphics need to catch attention, needs to be on brand. That's the other thing that I I think I talk about is you've got to stay on brand. Um, If you don't have any specific branding or you're with a brokerage that doesn't allow you to independently brand, um, we do have a branding uh, class that we did a while back. You can find the information on the page or on our YouTube channel. Um, and um, it, it's really important to have your own brand, even as, if it's just something as simple as a tagline. But stay true to your colors. Stay true to your brand. Um, work with your keynote speaker and your sponsors to incorporate all of that information into your flyer. Um, When I do events, a lot of times I'll advertise the event, but I don't have vendors yet. So as I add a vendor, I add their graphic to um, my flyer so that people know, and then I give them a shout out. Um, So your advertising is really important um, and your graphics need to be consistent throughout. So I don't have one flyer to post on one page and another flyer to post on another. If you look at like how collaborating agents, we're always on brand. We always use the same colors. We always have the same graphics in our information. And so the advertising you can do is social media or paid ads, direct marketing. Um, We're going to be covering paid ads in the dare. Um, We're going to get into a lot of doing Facebook ads and targeting and things like that and getting down into the technical nitty gritty of that kind of stuff to help your ads perform better, hopefully. Um, But social media is probably the simplest and the, the least expensive way to advertise. Always create an event in Facebook for your event. Um, you can create events in in, in um, LinkedIn and all of the other social media um, applications as well. But even if you're doing something as simple as an open house, create an event. 
because that event gets put out there to everybody to see. If someone searches events near me, it's going to pop up. So always, always create an event. Um, post across all social media platforms. I have a LinkedIn account. I was really active on it. I'm not now, but I still post my event stuff there because you never know when it's going to show up. Um, consider doing a paid ad for your favorite social media platform. And then again, like I said, be sure to target the right audiences um, because you don't necessarily want a local, a hyper local event to go out to the entire world. So make sure you bring it down to uh, the people that you're actually targeting. And of course, with real estate, we have to be really careful. We have to check that special ad category for housing. And even if it's an event that has nothing to do with housing, because you're a real estate agent, check that box. That way your ad won't get kicked and you're safe. And in direct marketing, you can always mail out like a postcard invitation. If it's your farm, mail out a postcard invitation. Include it in your newsletter if you do a newsletter to your farm. And like I said, I'm doing that home buyer seminar in the spring. I am going to design some really fancy invitations. I'm going to get the little wax melts and put the little wax thing on the back with my initials um, on it. And I'm going to send those out to my um, non owner occupied residents in my farm. So you can go as fancy as you want or keep it as simple as you want. So things to consider with an event, registration, giveaways, swags, swag handouts. Um, we're kind of running out of time, so I'm gonna speed up, but the slides will be there um, in the group within, well, Carrie and I have a meeting at two, so they probably won't be in the group until about four. Um, but Google registration, do a giveaway, know what swag you're going to be out, uh, handing out and order it well in advance. Um, like you were doing, you were talking about your cake pops, Adrian. And, you know, I just did uh, koozies for um, my farm and I was literally making them the night before. You don't want to be doing that. Don't make my mistakes. Um, give yourself plenty of time. Make sure you don't need any permits. Uh, sometimes if you're if you're doing an event, it's like an outside event at your home, um, you need to get a banquet permit to be able to uh, have alcohol. Um, again, limit that number of drinks to two so that you're not responsible if someone does get drunk. And all of this stuff depends on the type of event that you're doing. So I'm going to just kind of skip through these. There's a little checklist for two to three days before your event. You always want to confirm. You always want to send out reminders. Think about when you register for someone's event online, you get a ton of reminders from them. Night before, make sure you have everything together. Double check everything. Even if your event is at night, prepare the night before because inevitably there is always something that you forget that needs to be done. Okay, so... Um, we have a bonus for you guys that attended the meeting. So if you are still here, put your email address in the chat. And Carrie, you don't have to write them down. When we download the video, it downloads a copy of the chat as well. Um, put your email address in the chat. I have a small event planning kit that I uh, use. I put a lot, of, I use a lot of different items, but this little packet should get you started. It is not going to go up into the big group. So it's just something that you guys will get as a bonus for hanging in there with this presentation. And there are tons and tons of event planning templates on Etsy. Um, a lot, of, Some of them are even designed where they have this like really elaborate Excel spreadsheet for you. So you don't even have to do that. Um, but take a look because some of them are really a lot more complicated than what you need. Um, so just kind of take a look at them. Don't just go click and buy like I do <laughs> and look at it later and then say, oh, man, I shouldn't have bought that one. Um, and again, I encourage you guys to come down, oops, encourage you guys to come down and uh, register for the D.A.R.E. There's going to be a lot to learn on it. It's going to really niche down into social media and helping you guys step up your game. Um, any questions about event planning? Just about the...